Hello, good evening, and welcome to Auto Geek TV. My name is Olai Waju at Deshoko. Yes, I know what is going through your mind now that who is this new face? That's right. I am going to be your new host on the program. Okay, so sit down, relax, because it promises to be a beautiful and amazing one. I'm not in the studio alone today. I am with one of the finest, two of the finest, rather, I beg your pardon, two of the finest, amazing automotive experts. To my right is Tokwe Bukola Oju. Welcome good to evening, school. viewers. It's nice and, to be here today. Thank you, Larry. And also to my left is Patrick Alagia. Good evening, sir. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you very much. And good evening, viewers. I'm happy to be here in the studio this evening. All right. So the program is 60 Minutes with Professionals. They are professionals in their fields in the automotive industry, right? So we are going to be driving down the memory lane um, from when we started our live videos on Instagram. But now, this is an amazing one because we are broadcasting live from our TV studios. Okay, so today we are going to be running through the um, topic, the braking system and the braking system in our vehicles. Okay, so in case you are just joining in, you can also tell your neighbors, your friends, your father, anybody, anybody around you to tell me now. You can also um, get your notepad and your pen to judge things down because it promises to be an amazing one. Loads of educated and informative um, content on this program today. Okay, so um, you can also follow us on our social media platforms, um, www.facebook.com for slash autogig ng on twitter is at autogig on instagram is at autogig ng and you can also subscribe to our youtube channel which is autogig tv all right so gentlemen it's an uh, it's a privilege to have you in the studios with us today thank you once again all right sir. so um we are going to be talking about the braking system in the vehicle you know um, a lot of us um laymen like me i will use myself for an example i just want to get into my vehicle and drive off you know, but we don't know the rudiments and the fundamental um, um, roots to braking systems in the um, vehicle. So we would like you to give us step-by-step -step guides to all of this. I'm, I'm sure we are going to have a juicy content. Definitely. All right. So, Mr. Patrick, are you going to start? Uh, let's start with you. So, um, my, okay. Now, for instance, uh, like I rightly said before, that a lemma like we just want to get into my vehicle and drive off. What are the rudiments in, in, um, in our um, brake system in our vehicles? All right. Thank you very much, Larry. And um, viewers, uh, this is a very, very important topic as far as a um, vehicle is concerned. Now, I can drive a car that doesn't have good paint, doesn't have good body, but I can't drive a car that doesn't have brake because the brake is the number one safety point in any vehicle. Now, the braking system in your vehicle will determine whether your vehicle will brake you or you'll get to your destination. So it is a very, very important aspect of our vehicle. So once again, um, your, your braking system or your, the brake entirely is one aspect of the vehicle that you should not joke with. You can joke with every other thing, but you can't joke with your braking system because if you have to be safe in your vehicle, then you must have a functional and a very effective braking system. All right, so that's beautiful. Um, you, um, what really got my attention was, um, is it that it breaks you or it makes you? Okay, so over to you, Chopper Ojo. Why do we um, need brake brake system in our vehicle? Okay, thank you, the moderator. You know, just imagine you running down a hill without a control over your speed, and you have several dangerous things down the hill. Mm. You know, that is automatic accidents. Yeah. So now we should consider the fact that. The vehicle is a com combination of different metals and other materials together. It's heavy and it's being driven by an engine. Mm -hmm. So you, you are actually, uh, you know, um, you have actually induced the speed beyond a normal speed that a human it can run, it should run. So definitely you should have a form of control mm -hmm. to avoid accidents. And that's the reason for the braking system in the vehicle. Okay. Even the braking system itself has different components that um, 
you know, they are put together to ensure that when you press your brake, it's um, it the vehicle stops when it's supposed to stop. And there have been several improvements. You understand there are several brake systems that are now, they have their own modules, just mm -hmm. like a vehicle has a brain box and everything now. So, you know, all those components, they work together to ensure that you are very precise. When you apply your brake, the vehicle stops where it's supposed to stop. Long, long before now, those old vehicles, when you apply brakes at times, the vehicle can do like 30 to 40 meters before it finally stops. Mm -hmm. But now, we even have assisted brakes that when you apply brakes, the moment the vehicle senses that you you apply the brake suddenly, the rate at which the vehicle is going to stop, even if you have done it naturally, the vehicle will not stop that way. So it will even stop faster. So there are several components that um, we still talk about today that I, um, that works together to ensure that we achieve a proper braking. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, very educative um, information about brake system in our vehicle. And I'm sure uh, you people as well are also learning at home. Okay, so um, in case you're just tuning in, this is Autogate TV and I am your host for today, Olari Waju at Deshokom. And we're on the program 60 Minutes with Professionals and we are discussing braking system in the vehicle. Okay, so um, I have two of the amazing automotive experts and top engine and top bell job and um, Patrick Alagia. Okay, so you were talking about components. I want to direct my question down to um, um, Patrick now. Patrick, what are these components um, of braking system that he was actually trying to address us about? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, this is one aspect I really like to talk about. He made mention of something. He said it helps to control the speed. You, as a driver of a vehicle, you should have control over the vehicle and the vehicle should not have control over you. So one of the ways to control the vehicle is for you to have a good braking system in that vehicle. So that's a wonderful one. Now, for automobile or automotive, we have two types of safety. We have the passive safety and the active safety in a vehicle. Now, the... Passive safety is um, the systems in a vehicle that prevents the people inside in the event of an accident. Now, the passive safety does not prevent accidents, but it prevents the people, it protects the people inside the vehicle from getting injured or from getting, getting killed in the event of an accident. Whereas the active safety actually does the prevention of what? of accidents and one of the uh, one of the active safety components in a vehicle is the braking system oh. um, and for the braking we have different types of braking system we have the hydraulic braking system we have the pneumatic braking system we even have the electrical braking system but for more than 90 percent of the vehicles that we see around today for especially um sedan cars or lights um, duty vehicles or light commercial vehicles uses what we call the hydraulic braking system. Now, the hydraulic braking system has several components. The circuit is not so is not so bogus, but um, there are several um, components there. It starts from the reservoir where you pour in your brake fluid to the brake master cylinder. Then you have a servo system. Now, that's for the conventional braking system now. You know, the conventional braking system, we have the conventional braking system, we have the brake assist system. That way you have your ABS, your BAS, your VSC, and so on. But right now, I want to talk about the conventional braking system. A brake that does not have ABS, just the normal, your normal braking system. Now, you have your reservoir, your brake fluid reservoir, it is actually on top of the brake master cylinder, then connected to the brake servo. Then the brake servo is now connected to what? To your brake pedal. Now, this is the way it works. You have your brake fluid inside the, the reservoir, and because the reservoir is on top of the master cylinder, 
the reservoir supplies brake fluid into the master cylinder. The master cylinder has two major um, pistons. There is this, the master piston and there is a slave piston. Now, and there is a spring inside. What happens is that by the time you depress your brake pedal, the master cylinder pushes the fluid through the piston down to the wheels. Now, the wheels have what we call brake calipers. The calipers themselves has what they call um, pistons as well. Now, you have your brake, front brake system and you have your rear braking system. Before now, most vehicles use this um, brake disc for the front braking system and they use um, brake drum at the rear braking system. Where you have brake disc in front, you have the caliper and the brake disc. If you have the brake drum at the rear, you have the brake drum, then you have the, you have the caliper, the brake disc, and the brake pad. These are the major components, the major braking components in the front brake uh, braking system. But for the rear, sometimes you could have front brake disc and rear brake disc, or you can have front brake disc and rear brake drum. So when you have rear brake drum, you have the drum, then you have your wheel cylinders and you have your brake linings. Mm. Now, the fluid, what really does the, the, the job is, trans, I mean, um, the traveling of the fluid from the brake master cylinder down to the calipers or the wheel cylinders. So as to do what? In the case of the brake disc in front, what it does is that it pushes the piston and the piston, the pistons in the caliper, in turn, pushes the brake pad to hold the, the, the disc or the rotor that is um, 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 rotating. Whereas in the case of the rear brake um, drum, what the fluid does is that it sends from the master cylinder down to the, um, um, the wheel cylinder, or some people call it brake ports. The brake lining or the brake shoe is actually connected to the brake port. So what it does, it expands the brake line in the brake shoe to hold the drum so as to stop the vehicle. So that is, those are the components. So now you have your servo. What the servo does is that the servo is like a diaphragm. You know, what it does is that it helps to reduce the efforts that you, you should apply on your brake pedal. For most vehicles, there is what they call power assist or booster now, which is connected to the brake servo. You observe that from the inlet manifold of the, of the, of the engine, there is always one hose from the inlet manifold that is connected to the, um, the servo system. This is just to create like partial vacuum so as to assist the, the, the braking system. Oh. So those are some of the components that makes up the braking um, system. Wow, wow, wow. That's really beautiful. And um, like I said before, uh, uh, it promises to be um, a very educative one. And I'm sure you've been enjoying yourselves. Um, talking from the um, passive safety to the active safety, I'm really, really um, enjoying myself at this moment. Okay, so in case you have any questions for us and you would like to ask um, our experts in the studios, please kindly of, um, forward your questions to our comment section on Facebook or Twitter or uh, in, on Instagram. Um, that is facebook.com forward slash autogeekng. Um, Instagram is also at autogeekng. Twitter is at autogeek. Why you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at autogeek TV. All right, um, gentlemen, I, I must say, um, this is really, really amazing and beautiful because I'm also learning because on normal day, I, I just want to get into my vehicle and drive off and then uh, just <laughs> accelerate and then match my brake, you know. Um, this, uh, this is really bringing a, a, a very um, techn technical part of the braking system out, okay. So, um, thank you very much once again, um, Mr. Thank Patrick. Uh, so, um, engineer, talk about, are you all also discussing about the... Um, Passive and active, the hydronic brake system. How, how, how do um, um, someone like uh, me, I, I like to use myself for example because I'm representing the people, okay? Mm -hmm. So, how does someone like me, uh, okay, how do I get to know all of this in the vehicle? 
Thank you very much. I, actually, you don't necessarily need to know all of them, except you just um, you are just passionate about knowing everything. The, about the, the reason why I'm saying now, that is because I, I, I do will, not want this mechan roadside mechanics to cheat me. Yes, yes. <laughs> I will tell you. I will, I, will, I will talk about the areas where you need to know. Okay. There's no vehicle user that doesn't know that he or she changes his or her brake pads at different times. Hmm. You know brake pads, you know your brake disc, you know your brake caliper, mm -hmm. and they talk to you about your brake fluid exactly. times. You know, hardly will you hear some of them talking about your master brake or servo, except your braking system has really broken down. That's where you start hearing those things. So, uh, we will talk about um, different types of brake pads, and you know, we in Nigeria, some people will tell you that. The brake pad okay. I had on my car before doesn't make noise. When I bought the car, I was enjoying it until the first time I changed my brake pad and I begin to hear this funny noise when I apply brakes or I begin to see dust on my, on my, um, on my wheels. So they, they, these are the things that you, you need to know because they are telling you some things about your braking system. Mm. When you begin to see this kind of thing, we have different types of brake pads. We have the semi metallic brake pads. We have non apestos organic brake pads. Um, we have the ceramic type and we have the um, low metallic uh, brake pads also. So they, they are made of different components. The most common one is the semi metallic uh, brake pad, it's most common here. Yeah. It's very durable, you know, but um, the but it has is that it makes noise mm. it can, and cause uh, damage to your rotor, which is your brake disc, mm. you understand? So um, it's when, when people tell you that, okay, I have this particular uh, brake pad, it's cheap, you understand? Most of the cheap brake pads are mostly uh, semi-metallic brake pads. It, they usually have between 30 to 60 percent uh, metals in, in them. You know, the most quality uh, parts, uh, um, brake pad, or let me say the most durable is the metallic, um, the ceramic. You know, that is there, but they are mostly expensive. You understand? So you, know, you have to understand this. You have to understand the environment. For instance, the semi metallic brake pad doesn't do well in low temperature. Mm -hmm. You understand? So you have to understand all these things. If it rains and you have been driving inside water, you should understand that if your brake pad is a semi-metallic brake pad, the chances are that you are not going to, your, your brake system is not going to perform optimally. Immediately you are driving out of the floor, it's very high. So that's why we advise people, don't speed when you're driving inside rain, Athena, because a lot of people are not aware of it. And your type of brake disc also tells a lot because all these things hangs on the rate at which its transfer happens because that place generates a lot of heat because it deals with friction. It's also you, you mean the brake um pad yes system. the brake system okay. is you know the kind of it is generating is crazy. Wow. You understand? So the rate the, all these materials are used to make brake parts. There are several things that are put into consideration. The rate of its transfer is there. The, the way they behave under high heat, you know, high temperature is, is also there. And, you know, even your brake disc, that's why we have brake disc, that we have ventilated, we have the grooved brake disc. Yeah. All of them, they are just designed to make sure that it's dissipating it as fast as possible so that it can make your driving system. Because if that, if your braking system your caliper and your brake disc and your brake pad is too hot. Chances are that your caliper will jam. It's high. And when the caliper jams, your, your brake will fail. So it, it could fail or it could seize the vehicle from moving. So um, I, Patrick too can, can shed more light on, okay. on that. I was actually, I'm so sorry. I was actually going to ask you that. Uh, the, the brake um, discs, yeah. what what exactly does the um, brake discs do to the brake? 
<laughs> okay. I, 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 okay, I'm, I'm okay. going to him there. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah. What what the break this does is that if you look at the break this, okay, it is supply in motion in in in, in design is is like uh, a plate. You okay. understand? If you look at it, it looks like a tire. You understand? So you know you have to transfer that speed, you know, in that same way, you know, to the tires. That's why your brake disc, your tires is slapped on the brake disc. Brake disc. You understand? So they will both throws in circular mode. So what we now have is a, a caliper, and we have the brake pads in between the caliper, and we have the brake disc in between the two brake pads. So what happens is that when you apply your brake and everything Patrick explained that happens from uh, your pedal to the brake master, mm -hmm. as it pushes the fluid and it goes through the pipe to your caliper. What your caliper does is that the piston inside, when you press it, it just push, it pushes the two brake parts together to mm -hmm. grip the, the, the brake disc. Wow. Because you know the brake disc is in between. So it grips the brake disc and Based on the the um, the level of the pressure you apply on, on your brakes, with an understanding you have while driving the vehicle before and things like that, it will determine it will know whether you want to bring the vehicle to a halt or you just want to reduce your speed. Wow, this is this is really amazing. Quite, you want to say something? Yes. Yeah. Um, while he was talking about temperature. Okay. While he was talking about temperature. Uh, I remembered something that your brake fluid as well. You see, here in this country, we really don't uh, talk more about brake fluid. We used to let people understand that the way you replace your engine oil, it's okay. almost the same way you should replace your brake fluid, even though the interval might be different. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, your brake fluid, right, the kind of um, co um, um, fluid used as the brake fluid has to be a fluid that will have a very high boiling point. The reason is because now. So what, what do you mean high boiling? High point? boiling point. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now water boils at hundred um, degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now you need a fluid that will, that will get to maybe 150, 200 degrees Celsius before it boils, mm -hmm. because by the time the fluid boils, the 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 effectiveness deteriorates. You know. And then um, it won't be as active as it's supposed to be. So when the fluid boils, it affects the, 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 the effectiveness of the brake. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why you need a fluid that will boil at a very high temperature. Now, it's between 140 degrees Celsius to 270 degrees Celsius. And it has to be a fluid as well that has a very low, very low freezing point. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because the reason is because... All these things that happen within the braking system, friction takes place. And sometimes you can get as much as 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit okay. within that, I mean, within that mm -hmm. movement. So if you're not careful, the, 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 the temperature within that fluid line could get up to 150 or above 100. Oh, so if the fluid boils at, say, 100 degrees Celsius, then you're going to have problems with your braking system. So, and we need to take notes. Today we are common, I mean, the most common type of fluid is the dot three, dot four. In fact, we have up to dot five now. Yeah. The dot five, dot five point one have higher boiling points. They have the dots, they have the boiling points. Yeah. So you need brake fluid with a very high boiling point. And at the same time, we should always remember to vacuum our braking system at least once in a yeah. year once in a year. Clear the old fluid in the system because of um, um, moisture and other things like that that could cause pedal spongy, that could cause all sorts of uh, brake failure. Mm -hmm. So we need to add that to our routine service. At least once in a year, you flush your brake fluid and replace it with another, with a clean one. Yeah. Right. Right. Think, in addition okay. to that, okay. you know, it talks about different grades of brake fluid. It's part of the things that is important for you to know as a vehicle user is what what spec of brake fluid should be in my car. If the manufacturer, it's always written on the lid of that reservoir. If the manufacturer specify dot four, 
make sure it's dot four you pull inside. If you put dot three, it will affect the system one way or the other. It will affect the system and your your breaking stem will break down as at, at, at any point that you don't expect. So it's important that you know the spec that the manufacturer has uh, as uh, for the variable. All right, that was an amazing contribution, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So, in one minute, what are the um, what are the uh, basic things we should um, a vehicle user should watch out for as far as brake system is concerned? In vehicle? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, one of the first things you need to understand is that you should understand your vehicle when you know that the brake is very active. When the brake is perfect, understand how it operates. If you depress your brake pedal once and it's um, the brake um, holds. Then you should know that that is the way your vehicle works when the vehicle is in good shape, when the brake system is in good shape. Okay. So by the time you now start applying your brake three or four times before it goes, you should know that there is a problem with your brake. Have it checked by your mechanic. Secondly, um, you should also understand that the, the brake parts are consumable, they are subject to wear and tear. So do not wait until the pedal falls off or mm -hmm. the brake fails completely. So each time you take your vehicle for any routine service, Allow your mechanic to check your brake pad to see your level. And each time you open your bonnet and you check your brake fluid and you see that the fluid level is going down, it is an indication that your brake pedal, your brake pad is wearing out. So you need to take note of that. And another thing most um, vehicle users do is that sometimes they take their vehicle to a mechanic to fix for them, to fix their brake. And then they are just in a hurry. They, Please, just do it. I want to leave. I want to leave. And immediately the, the person fix the brake pad and tighten the tires, next thing they do is that they jump in and start a move. That is very wrong. Always make sure you, before you move, you depress your brake pe uh, pedal five or six times if they just finish working on the brake. Thank you. That will really much. help. Thank lot. you very much. Also, um, Mr. Top Rojo, what are the things um, the vehicle user should watch out for? You have to be very conscious of the kind of spare parts that goes into your car. In this, in this case, your brake pad. You have to be very, very conscious. I advise people to make sure that they don't use fake brake pads because one, fake brake pads can can cause a lot of havoc for you. Okay. You see that it can sustain the level of temperature that is required or level of heat that is required for it to function optimally. A lot of them breaks down at that point. And another thing you also need to watch out for is that as you open your bonnet to check the vitals of your car every day, always look at the level of your brake fluid. It's very critical because chances are that the pipe, because if you're driving a car that is over five, six years, chances are that the pipes are being exposed to rust and there could be leakage of this brake fluid. If there is leakage, then there will be the, the fluid in the reservoir will have gone down. And when there is no fluid in the system, when there's leakage, two things are likely to happen. The fluid is exposed to moisture. The air could trap inside the system, which is also dangerous. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you could lose all the fluid in the system. Um, social media platforms. In case you're just joining in, this is Autogeek TV. And I'm your host for today, Olari Wadju at Deshokon. Um, you can also um, go like our page on Facebook, that's www.facebook.com forward slash autogeekng. On Instagram is at autogeekng. And Twitter is at autogeek. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is autogeek TV. So we have questions rolling in from um, Facebook now. Uh, this says, uh, during your last episode, you talked on, on overeating. I noticed in my car that every morning, my radiator is usually low on coolant, that I need to fill it up with almost one liter. But the reservoir is always full at times above the maximum level. What could be the cause? Audio, um, is this audio? Okay. Um, Audi A6 2010, Wale from Ikeja. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think during the episode we explained the cooling system of the vehicle. Okay. And the relationship with the, between your radiator and the expansion tank because those are the places that people usually put water. And we explained that time that if you fill the water in your reservoir above the maximum, because you receive low and full, if you fill it above that full point, chances are that your car will over it. But in the case of this, the person says, at times the water in that reservoir 
goes up. Yes. And the water in the radiator goes down such that he has to fill in with almost a liter. Mm. Yeah, that that is a sign of overheating. Is a sign of overheating, and there there is a high chance most of the time that the gasket is flat. Oh. So that's it. I don't know if Patrick has. Okay, so what if from um, in Ikeja, <laughs> your um, yeah, his Audi is flat. <laughs> yeah, his Audi gasket is probably flat. Right. So you want to add something, Mr. Patrick? Well, just almost the same. What he has, what what he said. Um, the thing is that. Whenever you discover that each time you check your radiator and you see that the coolant is low, it shows that there is overheating. Okay. It's either there's a leakage somewhere, probably from the radiator itself, or one of the hoses, or there is an overheating in the system that causes that evaporation. So it is the evaporation that reduces the quantity, the of, quantity of water in the radiator so each time you see that we please have the vehicle checked it could be very dangerous um, for the engine all right thank you very much also another question is coming in says when i apply my brakes my vehicle always shake in fact i try to avoid traveling above 100 km per hour this is 20 2012 toyota camry michael from lecky is asking the question he says when my when i apply my brakes my vehicle always shake and i in fact i try to avoid traveling 100 km per hour so what can Michael do to this? Mm, okay, Michael, I will advise you. Um, when you say shake, I believe um, that word is, I think is uh, is not very clear. But when it comes to brake, I feel it is um, vibration, yeah, okay. sort of. Maybe the steering wheel vibrates or the the brake pad brake pedal pulsate. Maybe just you know vibrates yeah. on your hand. So in most cases, ninety nine percent of the time, it is bad brake disc that is okay. causing that. Sometimes a bad brake part too can cause it, but most of the time it is a bad brake disc. So please have your uh, brake disc checked. It's a brake disc problem, especially when you apply the brake before it happens. If, assuming you have not applied the brake and that happens, we could say maybe it's a tire related problem, maybe the tire pressure is low, or the, the tire needs and balancing yeah. or so. But when it comes to applying brake and you feel that shaking, that vibration, it's most likely a brake disc problem. All right, all right. Do you want to add something to that? To, no, 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 nothing much, okay. but just like uh, Patrick has said, there are two things you could now do afterward is that they resurface your brake disc okay. or you change the brake disc Fantastic. completely. Understand? But don't forget that I also mentioned the other time that the type of the brake pad you use can also damage your brake disc. Okay. So chances are that you just fix brake pads, your brake disc was not behaving that way before with the old brake pad. And when you fix this one, just suddenly began to notice this. You have to take note of your brake pad. Mm -hmm. If it's inspected and they say you know, the, the mechanic tells you that if you resurface this brake disc, it will still work, you have to change that brake pad. Because if you use the same brake pad, you destroy the brake disc to understand that you can't use it again, you have to buy another one. Okay, I'm sure Michael is listening right now. <laughs> okay, so um, this, is a question, this is a question coming from Twitter now, and it says, my front part goes bad. When, when we checked, one side, when we checked one side is full, while the others is fully depreciated. Please, what could have been the cause, sir? Toyota Corolla 2006, Kone from Aja. Kone from Aja is asking that his front That's, brake part. It's, let me understand it very well. That his front brake part always goes bad. Go bad. When it was checked, one side is full, while um the other yes. is is fully deappreciated. De okay, 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 okay. So he well, says, well, please, what could be done? Um, what could be the cause? It's a Toyota Corolla two thousand and six. Yeah, I I think the the problem will likely be one the quality of the brake brake, brake part. And at the same time, it could be that the calipers are malfunctioning. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, those are the two main, main, main. Basically, the calipers. 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 because just like we said earlier, you know, you have your brake discs, you have the caliper in between the brake discs, and you have two brake parts, one mm -hmm. at the front, one at the rear. Okay, one at the front, one at the rear. Okay. That is. Yes. Now, 
and you have pistons that the piston pushes the um, the the brake pad in and out. Now, if the piston is stuck, it just stays like that. So the particular area that the piston is stuck, you observe that it's just wearing out the brake pad. Yes. So sometimes you say brake binding. Now, one of the ways to note to note that is that when you're driving, you discover that one the other particular wheel will be hotter. Oh than the other one. Okay. So it's brake binding. It's very, very dangerous. Sometimes it could if it gets to a level, it will even bust the tire yeah. because of the temperature. It will hit the, the, the rim or the wheel to a level that it could even bust the tire. Okay. So um Kole from Aja, you check your color for America. Okay, so let's go um also from Twitter. When I apply my brakes, I usually feel impact under my feet. As I see something is eating from the pedal. My car is a 2006 BMW 530i. 530i. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 530i. Okay. I deal with you from Suru Leary. I deal with you from Suru Leary's accent. When I apply my brakes, I usually feel impact under my feet as it is something, as if something is eating me, I beg your pardon, from the pedal. A 2006 BMW 530i. <laughs> yeah. um, the... The problem could be your ABS. Okay. Because you I don't know the it can confirm to us if there is ABS sign on, on the instrument cluster. Okay. So speedometer. If you could see ABS there, you get it diagnosed to establish what the problem is. We talked about some brakes that I know the particular car is talking about the BMW A60, it uses it has ABS. It has ABS module. Sometimes if the module is bad, they, they also call that pulse generator. And you know, it's when it malfunctions, it can throw up that sign. Wow. If the ABS sensors are bad, you are likely to experience that too. Okay. So I do you, you can quickly uh, Just message to us. The is if it is the ABS, you can get back to us ASAP. So what, what, let's go for this last question because my producers are already. Um, giving me signals we are, we are um time is on our side okay so um this last question is also coming from facebook i drive a 2010 lexus gx460 it's always showing check engine light and floor blinks i have replaced the auxiliary the light is still on on the dashboard please what should i do i met from Aja. i made up from Aja is asking he has a 2010 lexus g X 460i. Mm -hmm. 460, I, I beg your pardon. So, um, what, what should Ahmed do? Okay, um, Ahmed, that's a very um, sensitive question. Um, well, that fall low actually is actually um, indicating the fall low of the four wheel drive system, you know, but if it comes together with the check engine lights, then you have to diagnose the cost of the check engine light first. For example, vehicles like that, the engine and the drivetrain. Hmm. What is the drivetrain? The drivetrain is your, your transmission, your shafts, and the road wheels. That's what they call drivetrain. So your auxiliary system, your transfer case, your differential, all those things, are your drivetrain because from your engine to the transmission, from the transmission to the road wheels. So what you the road wheels, you understand? So that is your drivetrain. Now there is a kind of co communication between the engine control system and the four wheel drive control system. So that communication is there. So in most cases, if there is any, if there is a problem with the engine control system the four low lights will be blinking on the dashboard. So sometimes it will just be misfiring. Sometimes just a bad fuel can cause the check light to be on and the four low lights. A lot of people would have gone to replace major components of the vehicle. So when it happens, first thing to do, have your vehicle checked. Each time that four low light comes up with the check engine lights, the problem is not directly on the auxiliary system, it is always on the engine aspect of the vehicle. It could be misfiring, it could be plug, it could be injectors, it could be any minor thing. The most important thing is that 
app the vehicle checks. By the time you are able to solve that check engine lights, you'll see that four low lights too will automatically disappear. So instead of you spending money replacing major components like your mm -hmm. transfer case and other things like that, please have it checked. It could just be just a single spark plug that is causing that problem. All so right. diagnose the vehicle, very, very important. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming to the studios today on Auto um, 60 Minutes with the Professionals on AutoGate TV. Um, one last one, Mr. Topper, before you go. One last one before you go. Well, um, the most important part of everything we are discussing here still goes back to make sure that your vehicles are properly diagnosed. You understand? Take it to a professional that will diagnose your vehicle. When you, you tend to spend more on your vehicle when it's strongly diagnosed. Just like the last question that Patrick just answered. I, I can't imagine changing a transfer case when you're supposed to change a single spark plug. That, that's, that's ridiculous. Spending hundreds of thousands when you could have spent just less than 5,000. So make sure that your vehicles are properly diagnosed all the time. Okay, so I'm um, speaking of diagnosis. Um, AutoGig is currently running a free diagnosis, so okay. they can check it out. All right, so um, Mr. Patrick, one last word from you before okay. we leave the studios today. One last word from me is that um, if you want your vehicle to serve you, serve the vehicle. What it means is that take good care of your vehicle, know the parts you fix. Cheap parts in the market, genuine parts, I mean, um, inferior parts in the market will only give serve for a very short period of time. If you want to enjoy your vehicle, please take it to the right people, take it to the right professionals and insist on genuine parts. That is when you'll be happy with the vehicle. Thank you. All right. All right, I hope you had an amazing time on the program today uh, because I did. It was packed, fully packed with our beautiful and amazing um, experts in the auto automotive industry. Okay, so um, currently, AutoGig is um, running a lot of beautiful offers. Uh, Mr. Tobo, you want to talk about that for a minute before we run the program? Yes, you know, we have AutoGig Academy and what we do at AutoGig auto Academy is to train people on how to Andrew has, when I say Andrew, how to repair vehicles. And it's it's not only technical, we also offer non-technical training. So we use 3D animation and simulations to train people on how to handle cars and we expose you to the latest technology in automotive engineering. At the same time, uh, we are offering free diagnosis and multi-point uh, tests at the moment for your vehicles. You can drive into any of our facility in Lagos and Abuja, and uh, you can have your vehicle diagnosed. And I'm sure by the time you see the results, you will be amazed. I'm sure your vehicle has never been diagnosed this way before. So I would like you to plug into this offer. I think the, the free diagnosis should be ending at the end of this month. This month. And due to the public holiday, the offices are resuming back on the 27th. 27th. So it's important to you maximize this opportunity. People that have been here, uh, they can testify to it. Thank you. All right, um, that's amazing. So you can also check AutoGig out from 27th of May to run your free diagnosis. Okay, so on that note, I say happy Eid of Victory to our Muslim brothers and sisters. Okay, so join us same time, same station next week on the program 16 Minutes with Professionals. I still remain your humble host, Olai Waju Adishoko. And I say, okay, yeah, okay, you can also follow us on all our social media platforms for more juicy content and information uh, about the program. You can follow us on www.facebook.com forward slash otogigng. On Twitter is at Otogi. On Instagram is at otogigng. And also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Otogi TV. Uh, do re enjoy the rest of your weekend. I never made it. But I know what it takes I'm motivated By a mix of emotion Got my statement And I'm reading it slow So I can understand it fully Appreciate my standing Go out of this world And right on time Oh, never in my life Have I seen the sky light up like I never made it
I'm